We are meant to create kind of a forum where people from different backgrounds and interests would meet, talk about thoughts of our days, and discuss it with the guests. And um, yeah, today we have Katrin and Vito saying something about that. <laughs> um, I was planning to say something about her, but I think she uh, <laughs> she wants to say herself. No, so Katrin is a good friend of mine. First of all, uh, from Berlin and Germany, or yeah, and uh, she because she's so interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be nice to ah, have talk okay, with her. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I have still no idea what this is and why I am here. I really don't have no clue. And this, uh, and also not what the topic really is, because uh, Vitas and me, we get along very well. But we have one thing that can be very productive, but sometimes very confusing. Giros E is an artist, and he has an artist brain. And I'm a scientist. I have a scientist brain, so I need a good structure. I need to know what it is, how, what I'm go go going to talk about, what the question is, who the people will be. Um, Vitas can can never offer me this, which can yeah. turn out to be very creative. Um, maybe it will be, I don't know, um, if this will but like, uh, some like give like you if somebody an doesn't like know exactly, so ah. Catherine lives in Rosie <laughs> Berlin, <laughs> she's almost PhD holder in psychology and researches about evil and our less nice things, and in her own words gave up structure for access uh, to not forget about existence. Yeah, okay, so I'm a, I'm a scientist, or I don't know if I, ident if I identify with this, um, because I moved to Berlin for a reason to stop identifying with what I do, because this is kind of what Berlin stands for, that we don't identify so much what we do, we identify that we want to have a good life, whatever this is for you personally. So I got this invitation very short notice, just two days before I came here to London. And um, I wish I could offer you like the newest re research results on all this on this topic, which I still don't know what it is. Um, <laughs> and uh, like also have great video clips, whatever. I don't have it. It's not what I can offer you. So maybe you will just get conf get out confused <laughs> as I am and totally frustrated with it. Maybe, um, yeah, I, I won't give you any answers. And um, this is more a very personal associative reflection about fear that might just be uh, very chaotic and confused or confusing and confusing. But as I heard, this is just a, a test. And so I feel more like the dummy that is going to crash anyway. So um, what I understood that this is about existential fears. Is that right? Is this the topic of today? <laughs> In a way, you could put it this way. It's, I think it's about fear. Maybe it's about confusion. Maybe it's like unknown about what's going to happen. And since we, most of us are artists, um, we generally don't know what's going to happen because that's how most people operate. Okay. And <laughs> I'm from Germany. I'm also uh, lived the last years in Berlin. And I know what Katrin is talking about. And I also know now, after like being a little bit longer here since uh, half a year, that it means to be in London, and this is kind of a cultural clash in many ways. So, it's I thought it's interesting to think about it because okay. it's about how to live a life and how to be happy with what you do, because you can easily enter a hamster wheel, and I can see how I'm in a hamster wheel sometimes by getting from job to job, trying to get money together to organize something like this with Vitas. But actually, you could get very exhausted and question yourself, what am I doing here? Okay, okay. So um, yeah, this is a very, really, very personal story of yeah, my story of, of fear and how to how I dealt with this on a different level. So the first thing I did is just like play around with the word existence, and I just figured existence, existence, exist, existence. So this is kind of an interesting thing I found out that this word is like really um, telling us existence and. Um, yeah, when I hear the word existence, I get this subtle feeling of, of fear, a fear that is so existential that I can hardly identify as, as an emotion, which is very often the problem with fear. I think of cardiac arrest. I don't know if this is the word for the, when the heart stops, but that's what my dictionary told me. <laughs> Switching out the light, nature, God, life, death, and in the end, money. There's no exit from the end of existence. Existential fear follows us as like an afterbirth directly in the cradle from where we start to learn how to deal with it, 
that we don't die from everything, that feels like it, that there is most of the time a solution for the nagging feeling of hunger, pain, cold, and so on. When I see babies crying over these things, I realize how much effort it is already to control these feelings every day as an adult. And we are not even aware of this anymore. Dealing with these basic existential fears without any effort is expected from an adult. We can never cut off the umbilical cord, umbilical cord? <laughs> to our existential fear, which sometimes is so strong that even it, it even makes it hard to breathe. In these moments, I envy people who are religious. They have answers, they have solutions, they have something to look forward to. Life goes on in endless orchids, transforms into other life forms. Maybe just into a bug, but it goes on. I don't have recourse to these useful tranquilizers. You don't die fast, but you'll suffer. The two sayings I grew up with, you don't die fast like this, and tomorrow it can be already over, are so contradictionary that it turned out for me as, you don't die that fast, but you will probably have some really horrible, painful hours before that. But this can happen tomorrow or even today. Maybe that's the problem. God doesn't have fears, so we, he can play with ours. I really tried to believe in God when I was a teenager. I tried to talk to him every night before I went to bed, but I never really had the feeling that he had the background to understand my problems. God, an existential fear. I realized that this was, it was actual another fear that made me try to believe in him, the fear that he will punish me if I stop trying hard. That he will punish me and I won't even realize it because he, I left him because I don't believe in him. So should I believe just because so I don't get punished? Follow someone who doesn't understand me? In this twisted situation, I discovered something else that made everything even more difficult. I discovered another dimension of pleasure, which is which I also. Can somebody hit the red button? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. It's God. Hello. It's God. I knew it. <laughs> oh no! Somebody told him. God has some questions. Now you found out that he doesn't believe in him. He promised me. <laughs> um, yeah, but. I but I don't know if it's still recording them with Tony. It must be, no? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, so good. Let's, hmm? then maybe somebody's downstairs. Could you quickly run downstairs? Okay, yeah. Can we just continue? And okay. let's pretend that okay. God is waiting for us. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing I learned in London. Let's <laughs> pretend. <laughs> so, I discovered another dimension of pleasure, which I also didn't want to share with this creature. That somehow, that somehow to me made no sense. I, did, it, I decided for physical pleasure and against useless talks to someone who doesn't un answer and doesn't understand my problems. But wanted to watch we, me all the time and adds up another uncomfortable emotion on top, shame. It really made no sense to me at all. At some, pi some point, God got fucked out of my brain. I felt a bit sorry when I found out in my puberty literature that he had died. But I was still alive, so it felt I made the right decision. Well, I hope I did. Fear is the problem of the scared cat, the ignorance of real problems by the privileged. The same problems I had with God appeared again in my psychoanalysis. At that time, I was talking again about my existential fears, which now were on a different level. I was afraid that my contract would not, wouldn't be extended, that money wasn't enough to save, that I might have to, to do stuff that I wouldn't like and get even more depressed, which would be good for him, but not so much for me. This fear of uh, fear, or rather speaking of it and loosening my very useful defense mechanisms, pressed m pressed me deep in the couch. I don't know if you do this here. We have psychoanalysis. We lie on the couch, like good old Freud times. It's comfortable, and I had the feeling that my arms and legs were made out of out of concrete, and I would never be able to stand up again. My therapist, a privileged son from an intellectual middle class family, reacted to this very similar to God. Does your fear has anything to do with us? I try to, I don't know if you've ever done psychoanalysis, but this is like the question that appears all the time to all the real problems. I try to handle this answer. Maybe my fears are really there for no reason. Maybe everything will be fine. I will find the job I love very easily, get a contract forever, and never have a, a worry, never have to worry anymore. I just have to trust in God who doesn't understand me doesn't listen to me and is dead anyways. Life that ends with hours of horrible suffering tomorrow or today. Him? Me? I just have to stop my fears. 
but what is a good situation? What if the God situation would appear again? I will ignore my fears, but existence will punish me for that. This also made no sense to me, so fear turned into anger. His absolutely unreflected natural ignorance left no space to my fear, nor my anger, and I left the room with the realization that my fears are real and they are not caused by some father, mother, subconscious sexuality, narcissism, denial problem. I have an image that I would, um, I would show you, but I think it does not make sense because it's so small. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I try to do it anyway. Okay, here you have a. That's that's how I or how I felt or I think the problem is very often. You have the the psychoanalyst. You have a death on the couch, and um, he says, "What do you mean? This is our last session." So kind of ignoring <laughs> reality. Um, this conflict that took place in the beautiful practice and room located in this amazing old building in one of the. Uh, f uh, financial capitalists in Europe, <laughs> ceilings high as me when I wanted to get away from my fears, with stucco down to the cellar, which I still today could plasticize from my memory, cause of hours of staring on it. My therapy lessons with the amphetamines that I had to take if I tried to follow a successful career as a scientist. Hello. Hello. My God is here. My God is here. <laughs> <laughs> um, was I? Uh, this conflict refers to the n denial of real problems and its psychological consequences that are inherent to neoliberalism. The shifting of socio-political problems into the self, into the subject, in us, it's our fault if we fail. We are responsible for our success, for our looks, for our health, for our children that we probably won't have, for our fun, our social life, our chia smoothie, our knowledge of everything that is going on, of our well, good and bad being. We are not ambitious enough, not smart, not creative, good looking, sporty, positive, eloquent, and so on, 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 and so on. And soon. Enough, never enough, nowhere. We didn't bring the best out of our existence. Existence ends soon. After a long time of fear and depression, no money, no fun, watching other others having it all, because they were stronger, better, faster, and they had the better yoga class. There is no way out, and we have to have to deal with it and have fun. The yoga lessons in the evenings let me deal with the, the fear of not being good enough, ever being good enough, that I had during the day, and start find, just start to find myself again to gain back the power to get through the next day, where I will do everything better, faster, higher. In between, I read articles like Five Easy Steps to a Better Self-Esteem and How to Control My Procrastination. It is all in my hands. The emancipatory ideas of the 60s to gain more freedom, more self-determination, more self-realization, autonomy turned out to be very useful for neoliberalistic self-exploitation. I do exploitate myself because I want it and it's fun. There's no limit. Leidenschaft, Leidenschaft, <laughs> Leidenschaft? Leiden schafft nix. I will translate this. <laughs> Artists were more like others confronted with this problem. It's not just a job, it's a passion. In German, the suffering is inher inherent to this word, Leidenschaft. Uh, translated like suffering creates is the word for passion in German. I don't know if you know this. Well, in German, nothing can be just fun. Suffering follows as the afterbirth uh, of existential fear. Suffering creates, produces. Getting comfortable makes, un makes us lazy and unproductive. That, is, that this isn't true was proved in several studies. Real suffering and existential fear just makes you paralyzed like it, it made me on the couch. Let's our bodies turn into concrete sculptures that we cannot get, mu get money out of. Running away, the immediate response to existential fear is neither possible nor a solution. We, all know, we know all that. We also know that children are the most creative and so learn best when they feel safe, aren't hungry, cold or tired, and can deal with what's going on inside of them and around them, which is already enough. Precarity makes you in a inevitable. I hate in this word. Inevitable. The wrong word I can never say. <laughs> <laughs> it's like truly, I can never say this word. <laughs> makes you inevitable, whatever, creative. <laughs> <laughs> creative in the ways you earn money. 
But if my brain is occupied with calculating how to get through the, the, the next week, then my brain is occupied with calculating how to get through the next week. I can't sell that. Well, it was already sold, been sold by an artist. That's our friend. I wanted to show you also the pictures, but do this next, the next time. time. We have a <laughs> It's a it's a uh, um, it's an art piece by Ananaji Yoda Gul. I think you know it. It's I think it's called Depth, Depth, Depth. It's where he pinned pinned uh, down all the, the the calculation of the depth he took for his art and um, and took pictures of it. It was a very very strong work, I think. <coughs> when I have to use one third of the time of the duration of a research project I work in to write applications to get money for another year, then I can't focus what kind of feelings my interview partners arouse in me and how they creatively analyze this. Fear and suffering does not make me creative. And then there's the voice again in my head, why are a lot of people still productive Poli to politic art or work, whatever. People, people who have even much, much bigger problems are much less privileged than I am. I still really don't know. What's the difference between me and them? It ashames me, again. It makes me admire people like my friend with the glasses tall, <laughs> kind of close to me right now, <laughs> who never gives up fighting, who has this endless stream of energy and who very often gives a shit. <laughs> Giving a shit. What shit do I have, wh what shit do I give to what? Of course, I can find work easily. Well, at least I, uh, the belief in this helps me dealing with my fears. But I had reached a certain standard that I'm still not willing to give up in my head. I mean, I have a fucking PhD. I want a job that I like, that interests me, that gives me more money than just to live. The way I, choose cho the way I chose seems, seemed to promise me that. But I'm an educational climber, a female on top of that. Both have their difficulties with an academic career, but I am responsible for this. So I have to compensate all these difficulties that come with my gender and my background. That means having, having even more self-esteem, working harder, disciplined myself for the highest overcome, for the highest overcome my fears, even fiercer, giving so much shit to everything. Finishing my PhD, I moved to Berlin. I moved there out of several reasons, but one was also to maybe find an island where, I, where all this is a bit slower, softer, where I can find more giving shit people that are not willing to pay the price who decided against good and for pleasure, who found another solution for their existential fears, who don't follow the lifestyle package that motivates you a lot through fear. But Berlin, as we all know, has changed. Ooh. And so there are still some islands, but sometimes these islands just seem like uh, on the surface. Nicely old train stations with graffiti walls are holding food markets for the successful, good-looking, healthy, and political new rich that I can't really afford and actually don't want to. But these people confront me again with what I probably could have become. I grieve from time to time that things in my life made it more difficult for me um, than for them. Sometimes I get angry and then ashamed again because I still have too much. I, I still have it so much better. The only time I felt really safe in my life was when I was in the in the in this leftist scene, where we all hung out together all the time, lived together, solved problems together, read, discussed, partied, and demonstrated together. It was an island, a bubble that made me feel safe and actually actually be safe, because at the entrance of the squad house, we hung out the neoliberalist neoliberalist neo norms stopped. We had different rules, norms, values. Friends helped me getting out of, of, out of to be when the too much fear paralyzed me for days caused by serious sudden money problems. Scientists call it the, the tent and befriend reaction. Freeze, flight, fight or fright are the solutions for fear. Scientists find also out that the brains of woodpeckers, woodpeckers, which live in groups, are smaller than the ones which live alone. They interpreted this that the, that the group peckers don't need such big brains because they solve things together. It took me a long time to learn to identify fear itself. It took me another long time to identify the different sources of my fears. And I'm still learning ways to cope with these fears. 
Sometimes I can overcome them. Sometimes I just have to wait till my hunger motivates me to leave the house again. Sometimes I'm lucky that a friend calls me several times till I can answer. My left back background helps me a lot because I know things can be different, at least in a small bubble. So my move to Berlin showed me that I need that bubble to not get stuck in my apartment paralyzed, to not uh, let God, my therapist or anything else again gain too much power in my head, to not forget to give a lot of shit and to misunderstand the usefulness of yoga. To stay resistant and political, to not get stuck in the thinking about the money torture, where I don't have to pretend not to be sovereign and know it all. So maybe this is how I understood Vitas, that this is the start to create a little bubble here. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thanks very much, that was great. Yeah. So what was my, my idea? I, I found out my, it was more, I mean, we know so many research that like we are all depressed now because of the society and we are like using our fears, blah, blah, blah. But this, this really getting connected with my fear and, and trying to found out, find out where my fear is and how to deal with this is really like one of the biggest struggles I had in the last years. And um, I think this is the only way how we can start to overcome them or to find, a, uh, to find several ways how to, to deal with it. Okay. And not un, un, not such uh, not just on a subjective to but to organize ourselves, like in this group. I think this is what what it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but do you feel kind of fear lesser? Can you say that? Fear no, lesser? I feel much more fear because now I feel it. Yeah, but because maybe that's already <laughs> something. No? Huh? It sounds a little bit like therapeutic. No, <laughs> no, but that's yeah, no, m and also like knowing. Like things what we take for 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 granted. That's how life is. To to really admit to yourself that it makes you anxious very often. When you do so many things that we don't even realize that we are we are we, we have fear. I like fear every day. I fear uh, right now, <laughs> all the time. And I think if we don't admit this, then there is no way of dealing with this. I mean, this is. I've experienced even in the last days when people who work as a freelancer mostly, they got sucked in their job because they did one mistake after working for years and the company was sort of first taking him off all jobs for the next month. He has no idea how to pay his rent. And this is like pure fear to live with this feeling um, this could happen to me all the time, immediately. Here even more than Berlin because it's so fast paced. Not everybody's a freelancer, but I've realized that freelancing is like nowadays the preferred model of many employers because it's so handy you can just suck people whenever you want you don't have any responsibilities for somebody's life and to live this way it's like all of a sudden people will never complain will never do anything because the fear controls everybody that's my feeling well i had i had a, I had a talk yesterday with someone and he told me that uh, here in i mean i don't know that i don't i know the situation in germany but not in britain that you don't really have a uh, a left or a right anymore there's no movement everything is like in the middle and you don't have there are no fights or whatever because I mean this is something I experience in Berlin we have demonstrations all the time so there's there are places where I can go where I feel okay all these people think the same and we can start a demonstration or whatever but uh, he told me this is not really happening here so I don't know how much, where, where, where there's something you can is there a possibility to to be political, to, to do something and get out of this and not being singleized with your fear and just follow what it's... I mean, in a funny way that the whole Brexit situation, since I'm here, this was the first thing that happened to me as a new foreigner in London. It's like people decided to leave the European Union. And since then, I also feel like people get more interested in politics or try to understand what the European Union means after they have decided to leave it, which is interesting because after that it created some protests at the parliament and some like discussions already. But it needs, I guess, something that is like threatening, a fear from yeah, the fear is a positive thing in, in some ways, like where it can wake people up and some if you're talking about like and having a kind of political voice or talking about things or you know maybe I don't know. But I think the the problem is that that there is already so much fear and people don't really realize mm -hmm. that 
they are afraid of things. They just just follow this and try to protect and and uh, this different level of fear. Like the like the the first reaction is running away or fighting. This is not possible, and then you get just paralyzed. And I think if you don't have a structure where you can deal with your fear then you just get paralyzed and then there is no this is what i experienced when i moved to berlin and i had another time of a like really hard um, financial very sudden problem i just got paralyzed and i had a friend that called me and then came after three years and got me out of the apartment because i was just paralyzed i couldn't do because i didn't have the structure in frankfurt i had the structure but there i didn't have so i really felt the difference when you have a, a structure and when you don't and then you're just paralyzed and then you don't do anything you can't mm -hmm. and um I see this more. This what what is happening at the moment. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like people are kind of paralyzed by their fear or just follow what they they think mm -hmm. and are too anxious to to be political maybe because they will have bad results. I don't know. But I'm not an artist, so I don't know how your world is. <laughs> I think fear is fear, no matter what. Or not. It's like many people experience that, and like. Um, being in a structure or being in Berlin, for example, as an island, is that a solution to that? say, okay, I retreat to an island where I'm with my peers and we can help each other. And the question is also for me, um, do you think that this fear is created in a certain way to uh, as a control unit or is it how, where does it come from? Why is everybody so frightened? Was everybody always frightened? Yeah, of course, because if you're, if you're afraid, you can be easily controlled. And I'm not saying, I mean, I'm the biggest enemy of conspiracy theories, but that's how power works. The, uh, even yeah. How everybody uses power. That's mm. right. Of course. Of course, I mean, the, especially with this, like, um, uh, when, um, I don't know you, what you call it, like, Basic income, the basic income income discussion is always uh, it's always been said. Yeah, if they have basic income, then people get lazy and don't work. And there are several studies which showed no, it's actually not true. It's the opposite. But it's still, I have my problems with the basic income, but that's a different discussion. <coughs> um, but this is like there are studies that show it's not it's not true, but it's still not. Of course, it's not being because then then people are not very easy to control and get you know, a certain certain way. Yeah, I think people are more afraid now actually. Like especially in this country, because yeah, this, like inequality is rising so much, and actually, like it disproportionately affects young people, and they're saddled with so much debt that they, they have. yeah. And I mean, for me, it's so easy to speak about all this because I don't have children. I have just a little apartment. I don't have much to lose. You can say, you know, I don't. My fears are kind of. I have my. I moved to back to my parents. Whatever. I have like little solutions for everything. I'm very privileged. I know that, and st I still have this fear. It still gets me when I get a letter from the job center like you have to move out in two months because your apartment is too expensive. It's like it gets, makes me paralyzed every single time, and I'm still very privileged and don't have much to lose. So imagine someone who really built up something and who's threatened by this. I cannot imagine what fear this person has I cannot imagine it and of course this the, the person cannot even let not feel the fear anymore and so it's just like running and, and trying to do something um, and keeps you away from being of reflecting and getting political and that's that's the problem I think mm. people don't even have time to think about their yeah, fear right. anymore because everybody w like they're in such a trap that they work all the time to and like just to sustain, and they can't even reflect on it or get angry about it. Yeah. Like, 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 like also, like, 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 I don't know, I've had the idea with Kristen with, you know, like, bring together, like, um, in this room, because it's very, like, tiny room, so office or, like, studio, uh, people <coughs> to have, like, dis to start discussions, for example, like, about, like, possibilities, uh, what, you know, what, like, maybe, like, different, because we have, like, so many different people, um, uh, maybe, like, interesting minds, what you can do, like, Maybe like what are possibilities? You know, to to do different, like being creative or being now like a PhD psychologist, and maybe like kind of you know like a, like a different thoughts. What you can do maybe, or like what are possibilities to put here on the you know market or what you, you know just like kind of bring ideas like it can be like abstract ideas but to just kind of to, to think about possibilities what you can do to like maybe based on the jobs or what you can do being like how you can put on the market or how you can put you in the society or yeah the question is like if everybody has this fear or this pressure all the time 
to maintain. And I think it goes to all levels. It doesn't matter if you like have no money or no job, or if you have like a good job, the pressure and the fear may be the same. Like, how is there a way out of that? Can can somebody, could I do something different to feel a little bit better? Because I honestly don't want to live like this. <laughs> I don't want to feel fear all the time because that shouldn't be my motivation. But isn't that fear what makes you human? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think like, because uh, I think like, um, at the other end of the scale, I was trying to think about what the opposite of that, like, paralytic fear is. Because, I, I mean, I've lived in London my entire life, and like, I, I have that fear, but it's, it's, the, my paralysis comes from a, a, like a slightly different delusion. It's not the delusion of, of like this existential fear. It's the delusion of, of that everything will be okay. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. In that, like, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a pro noia almost. In that, like, it's, that's, it's, I'm, like, maybe it's because of where I've grown up that I'm so optimistic, and that then. It, that f like I get a paralysis from the fact that nothing has happened thus far, which I suppose is kind of part and parcel of the same thing. But I don't get a fear from from worrying about things that might happen. Uh, I worry about things that haven't happened. So it's kind of in that it's, it's like a slight reversal of that. And I suppose is how I see it. That might not make much sense. But uh huh. No, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> twist it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come back to this on a second. Like, I, mean, I think like, I understand <laughs> this a little bit. Yeah, I'm just. No, you have fear like in the <laughs> retrospective perspective of your yeah, so life because you're, I, let's call it self uh, cheating mechanism. You realize that it doesn't work. Yeah, I suppose it's kind of uh, like you're talking about this, like <coughs> this idea of. Of a paralysis, which comes from a fear of, of like uh, of not finding institutional structures which are going to support you and like allow you to do the, the things that you want. <coughs> and I suppose that having grown up with very little interaction with institutions, political institutions, like I would say that like my generation of people I've grown up with aren't particularly politicised because the conduits that push you towards a political institution don't exist anymore. It's, it's really mm. interesting that you discussed like religion. And the church, which are like, and, uh, and maybe trade unions is another one that would be interesting to put into there. But like, those those conduits don't exist anymore. So like, how do people engage with with politics? Mm. It's like it becomes so fractured and granular. It doesn't really mean anything anymore. Mm -hmm. So it's just like mm -hmm. I think I think that like my fear is is not from my fear is is kind of I'm, how, how am I going to say this? It's not from like a. Uh, it's not it's not politicized in in that sense that it's kind of a fear of of those structures not existing it's kind of like a, a mu it comes from the other the other way if that makes sense so it's a fear of of um let me try and yeah well, just to backtrack i mean the first thing you said was uh, those fears i mean uh, since time immemorial uh, people have been uh, the, the the world has been awash with fear. You know, if it's one end of the spectrum that you don't have something, and that you're, uh, you feel you need you need more, or that your 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 basic uh, your you your basic self is 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 threatened. That's that's one end. The other is that you have all you have, but the the fear that that can be wild away, or that that will. You know, someone can take it from you. I mean, you know, there's a what you said about it being um, a human a fear. Fear is being human. So I mean, I mean, it's just the way you categorize it. And uh, yes, today, and uh, there's another thing that sort of buzzes around a lot: this uh, precarious nature of us uh, today, or something. I mean, it's funny because I mean, it doesn't just exist within this precarity. Doesn't just exist within a certain tract, you know, and it isn't just an artist or, a, you know, it, it's, it's across the board, a board, you know, there's uh, things that are, are changing quite drastically and, but, um, you know, there, it, that optimism is something you need to also grapple with at the same time, you know, you, you can't just um, bob things up and say it's going to be all right, you need to, mm -hmm. you need to work with your fears, you need to manage your fears, but 
that's what uh, that's what people have done. I mean, what is the 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 Greeks have the, had this thing of an amulet, which when we think of an amulet, it hangs around your neck or something, but it has this kind of mythical or has this sort of magical uh, force. But it was what it meant was that it, it, it was a mask. So you have to I don't know veil yourself or protect yourself and and. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, that's it. I mean, no one can offer any one solution. It's as your therapist maybe said, it's peculiar, your fears and your solutions are peculiar to you. I mean, of course, there's common denominators because we live in the same, sort of inside the same social fabric, so to speak, but, but it's how we kind of pull that o over each other or, or take it off or, but um, yeah, it's vague. So yeah. that's why people become spiritual or religious or whatever they find it for sure, a relief. But the other hand is like par being paralyzed by not knowing where to put all this stuff because you're like steamrolled by what comes into your way. Like I like I like I like I'm interested in solutions. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and I uh, interested in questions. Uh, give it up or continue. Or how to make it better? How to change? Yeah, but the, you know, but no. behind what you just said, or some is something are specifics, you know, to you. But the, yeah, but, but the thing is, not <coughs> just me. It's, it's yeah. It's no, I know. A yeah. lot. Well, yeah. not, not a lot of like, not me, but like, how to describe them, or you know, it's like um, it's what you see, what's happening. Yeah. The question is also: Do you have to deal with it alone, mm. or can you deal with it? like in a group, because it makes it nicer to share mm -hmm. what you have in your mind. Because you can sit in like an empty space and like, mm -hmm. how am I doing it? What no, are no, you no, doing sure. about your fingernails? Mm -hmm. but that's, yeah. a, that's, that's a part of being, you know, the, the, in that group, like those woodpeckers, you know, that's, mm -hmm. uh, you do... But your brain will shrink. Mm -hmm. that's a good yeah, I don't need, I mean, <laughs> we've, it's already shrunk. We're only, uh, mm -hmm. um, that's not a bad thing. It's just like, it means you, you, you don't need such a big brain because you don't have to solve all the problems for you. Yourself, right, right, right. right? Mm. So you can focus on this or um, yeah not I mean I feel like this every day like I have this super big brain because I have to think about my groceries I have to think about money of course all the time I have to think about who is cleaning the apartment who is going to show me the coolest movie who is taking me to the cinema who is blah blah blah, blah. it's all in my brain because I, I decided to live alone since three years which is not the easiest decision um, and I think there comes another point in which is, I really, I must say, I come from this, this leftist and we are, we're always together. And for me it was like, because it was in Frankfurt, it got a little bit too tight. That's why I moved to Berlin. But I got, I got confronted there with, I, because I, I always thought it happened to be that I land, ended up in this left. It was never really my decision. It was just the people I, I hung out with. But now I realize, no, it actually were subconscious de decisions because this is like a very safe, it was a very safe, still is a lovely, nice uh, scene of people. And now in Berlin, okay, I have this great opportunities everywhere and this were very interesting people every day, but I feel very, very uncomfortable and lonely all the time and very anxious because I'm confronted with this, also with this new generation who did not grow up with my 86, uh, 68 movement ideas that I still have because my teachers were from this time. Um, who are very, very uh, influenced by neoliberalism through and through. And they just, they come to Berlin not to have a good life. They come to Berlin because they want to be the greatest DJ, the greatest artist, the greatest designers, do whatever. They don't have any ideas of, uh, of what I experienced and what my ideas were. I lost my point. Well, I guess that's, I'm an artist now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder, is there a point where, you know, the way that can be, you don't always live in fear. And what are, how, how can you think about or describe the moments, or what are you doing in those moments when you're not paralyzed by fear? Or when, like, those kind of times, and without being in a specific place, but are you doing something specifically, or are you like engaged in a certain project, like maybe, you know, if you're doing an artwork or a film or something and you're so interested in it that you don't have time to think about your groceries, your shopping, your kind of everyday, or you're just kind of, like maybe there's different ways or like kind of, I don't know, just talking about possibilities to overcome, I was thinking about maybe that's one way of kind of, I don't know, trying to 
because there'll always be fear but like kind of trying to fill the time more with non-fear or else then maybe another way of dealing with fear when you're paralyzed is just stripping back because there's so much information in the world and there's so many things going on that it can be so overwhelming but even just waking up and like i don't know i think we always lose track of like just the really simple kind of parts of being alive or existing or existence and stuff like that or trying to get back there maybe you do it through yoga or anything but just on a daily kind of level i mean it's also a little bit of transforming this feeling yeah. you know i mean going getting grocery can be fearful to some people totally yeah especially if you're not in the mood <laughs> to see someone <laughs> during that you day get a and phone call and, and your dad oh. calls and yeah. says like your mom has cancer that is yeah. a fear you may have yeah. it's not always money mm -hmm. the money is like a specific yeah. thing maybe to some artist but i think it's way beyond people are actually quite well but you just like but, uh, but yeah. you know like but then i don't think uh, brings to the same point that is all about existence and about money because you wish better life and you kind of want to be you know like why you see this fucking like office person getting so much like you know something and and you are like have so much in your brain and then you know like and you feel like piece of shit like like why why there's such a difference like you know when why society doesn't 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 support this kind of people or don't give those people possibilities to get something you know where they like mm -hmm. feel comfortable or better but i think, I think it's the comfort and better doesn't come from that because i've got like can i say friends even who are doing very well with their art practices and their fears are fucking huge <laughs> you know so i don't think fear kind of leaves at any kind of point so i think it is maybe about people or sharing or finding community or finding things but like kind of and mm. obviously like kind of money economy everything like that will you know can help but i don't think it's a solution i think it's maybe more so kind of like these can i don't know mm. oh yes i remember what we, uh, what i wanted to say with my <coughs> moving to berlin is uh, that moving to berlin i tried to i think subconsciously i tried to get into this like kind of normal neoliberalistic lifestyle to also mm. become one of them and be super hedonistic and uh, have the chance to whatever I thought in my head I would become there um, but I got thrown back to my being female being having certain psychological issues that are maybe not so productive in the end and then I, 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 I realized okay um, what I read all my, my life about this that for this lifestyle you have to really have you have to be super privileged you have to be super healthy you have to be blah 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 and I'm not so this creates the discrepancy that I cannot keep on with this life. So I need my left leftist group background to get through this mm -hmm. life as most of the people need because they don't they're not that fucking privileged as these mm -hmm. kids who are have rich parents and become super great DJs and whatever. Yeah, Never but the, the mm -hmm. also kind of said you don't need to be of a certain mm -hmm. sect to to shine. You know, of course it helps if you had so if you had money, but I mean um, if you're there's something healthy inside of like if you revert back to that group that you need because of its support and everything mm. well then surely well maybe uh, i don't know it's different because maybe it doesn't support the one or the ego or something but you get things done it's a healthier way but if but that, that that's a funny kind of dichotomy because you speak on one hand about the of of talent shining and the, there being a pinnacle or something a bit of ambition in one person becoming i don't know the, the top of their game or something um, but I mean, I don't know. You don't always you, you need you don't always need uh, you know money for that. You just need ambition and uh, for tenacity and, and things. But uh, and no no group will help with that because if you're wanting to get ahead or something, you're not gonna. It's it's a it's that the, then they're not group tactics because it, just in speaking of you're talking about reverting back to. A group for support, but on the other hand, looking at people um, that that shine in like individuals or something, because they have they come from a rich background. I and I'm not didn't understand. So you're talking. You, you you said that mm -hmm. uh, maybe you feel like you want to fall back on, let's say, the comfort of familiarity and those that had helped you, this left group, because uh, you couldn't reconcile or can't. Maybe it's a present thing with the uh, with those that are are pushing through or being i don't know becoming the as you say the 
the top of their game, the DJ, the designer, whatever. I don't know if they, but, but they come to Berlin to be to want to become, and that's that's a different approach to to this whole concept of good living. This is kind of a. Yeah. Okay. Well, this um, is not. I'm not speaking about specific people that are successful. I'm, I'm talking really about young people that come into Berlin to have to, to live their neoliberalistic. Mm -hmm. I will be the great new superstar life and try it and. Um, that was more what I was speaking okay. about, not about, not about single people who become very successful for whatever uh, lucky reasons or ambitious or whatever. That's not what I was okay, talking sorry, about. Okay, sorry, then there was a... So you're uh, talking uh, about more the contradiction of an island that promised something and then coming with a philosophy that is actually destroying the island you're entering? Also, you know yes, I mean? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you were talking, I thought of my first idea was that actually religion and a lot of even current therapy and self-help um, has the almost like the imperative that you know your fear is not something you should listen to you should be brave and you should not be not let yourself be overcome by fear and it also made me think of Cornel West you know him this um so he's an african-american philosopher and in this film called the examined life he says the condition of a uh, life or something is to learn how to die so to what what it means and that's i think from plato is like you need to be able to face the your own death it doesn't have to be existential death it can just be like you know you will always changing into something new we always have to change we always have to let something go and to me personally that's a condition of being brave like to let go to to focus on um well to not let myself be overcome by fear but i also think and strangely we're talking about it on our way here the way out is first of all in but also through other people. So, you know, you're talking about these imaginary people who have amazing lives, but they're also, and you feel guilty about people who have, who are suffering. But the fact is, we, especially now at this present era, we live in a really weird times when people are very selfish, individualistic, and political representation doesn't really encourage any higher values and courage. But maybe that's why we need to be even more brave and to, you know, think of injustice and just like, really try to be brave for other people as well. And, you know, not focus so much on ourselves and all, all these people who you know, live these aspirational lives. But we can fight and maybe today is, or at this moment, there's an opportunity to kind of be brave and fight for something so that we help other people have better lives and not even better lives, just not have so much injustice or have to face that much injustice. I think um, I think you were mentioning that you, fear is a human part of being human. I think there's psychologists always distinguish between the fear of for your safety and for your life and then the other fear that would be more like anxiety. And one fear is protective, but the other fear is not protective at all. And I'd say from my experience, when you actually lose a lot, you kind of lose a lot of fear as well. And that's good. Being fearless, I think, is where, where to go. <clears throat> so courage, that was so strange that you know, we were talking about fear. And I think someone mentioned, like, what is the opposite of fear? I think it's easy. It's courage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not okay. doing it. <laughs> <laughs> never want to become a teacher. Never will be. Um. Okay, I like that. But um, I guess my question is: To what extent are we then contemplating the intersection of politics with emotions, and to what extent are emotions are political, rather than being transhistorical or? some kind of inherent qualities that we all have as part of our human nature, right? And once we begin to contemplate the extent to which our emotions are political, I think then the appropriate level of action is not within our individual self-reflective uh, responsibilizing 
uh, mode of being, which is actually what neoliberalism mm. wants us to do. Mm. For example, things like precarity is a socioeconomic condition. You know, it's an emotion that is imposed on us by particular socioeconomic structures. To then take it as a personal failure and individualize it and try to somehow overcome it and be more optimistic is not to recognize that this is an emotion that is imposed on us by the environment that we live in. And uh, in that sense, I would say that uh, the challenge is to deal with these eco emotions in an equally political way. So for me, there's nothing wrong with being part of the collective and trying to collectively experience emotions. Because you know the system that we live in is very much invested in experiencing emotions individually, not only fear, enjoyment as well. You know, it's all about, you know, being on Facebook and enjoying projecting your brand to others as opposed to actually being more, you know, in a collective mode of thinking and relating, you know, enjoying collectively rather than enjoying individually and, you know, being afraid collectively rather than being afraid individually and so on and so forth. So I guess to what extent do we draw the line and say, okay, but this is, you know, the personal is political and then the way of dealing it is should be, you know, more uh, ideologically um, uh, yes, informed. I definitely yeah. agree, and there's it's yeah. definitely not a new challenge. I mm -hmm. think the fact that you know we're talking about fear, but when you put it into context of suffering, there's mm. a lot of political thought, there's a lot of religious mm. thought, there's so such huge wealth of thought that kind of tries to. Um, think of suffering and think of what it teaches us, where mm. it puts us as moral beings, as human beings and you know, political beings, etc. So mm. I think, yeah, I, I definitely agree that yeah. that kind of fear no, I, I is I definitely I agree with you, but I think, you know, if there's one political. defining feature of our time is this kind of <coughs> emphasis on individuality and entrepreneurship, you know, and trying to treat our lives as individual mm -hmm. projects, you know, and then I think take, a, I take responsibility for the risks and the losses and the benefits of what that entails. But that is probably yeah. what we should recognize, that our mm. individual mm. fears are actually part of, um, yeah. um, or are a mm. cause for political fight. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's what I was trying to vocalize in, that like, your you're saying that you fall back onto this, into this leftist group, which is a safe space, um, because of the fear of, of everything that's coming into Berlin. And I think I was trying to vocalize that, that, that the individual fear, which is kind of like, mm. which I suppose there isn't, you're, you're upset that there is a lack of options for people. I suppose, we're not upset, but like there is a lack of, of any of those support networks for people who are feeling a fear, which is not from precarity. I think that the fear is perhaps from the ability to do too much, mm. in that like there Absolutely. is so much. Mm. Mm. And, and I think that like, you, you talk about like, like going back to these, this deep, FOMO. But yeah, I think so. But I think <laughs> also, but like you've got all these people who are moving to Berlin and they all want to be the best DJ and the best artist, but like how many of them are actually gonna become the best? And I think that that like breeds a fear in itself and that the, the lack of institutions which we can engage with, the lack of support networks mm. which you do have, because of the, the, as you're saying, the socioeconomic situation that we find ourselves in, is like the, the key issue. And I think it is about finding ways of, of re-engaging with a, a, a process like that, is, that means that we can actually have, and, and ways of, in, like, of, imbuing some sort of agency into the decisions that we make in those collective networks. Because you're saying that, like, the thing about demonstrating is it, perhaps in 1968 it did a lot, but, like, what happened in the, the recent demonstrations down at, down at Hazel Pond? N not very much. People took photographs of funny signs and then posted yeah. them. And so, like, what does that mean? I mean, There's it's no like... Impact. It's like a news feed yeah, exactly. that's like run yeah. through. But I think that that's, that's a discussion about the way in which, like, Politics has changed as opposed to sort of like fear. I think the fear in itself is, is shifting because of it in itself. It's like a, it, like you're saying, it's really, it's a different. We need to make a boundary as to where, like, where those, where it becomes emotional, where it becomes just a circumstance. Really, I think. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Definitely.
I agree, that's what you were saying about where you fear about things that have not happened. Yeah. Because we do all those protests. We've been doing it since Blair with the Iraq war. And we're part of that generation. We grew up with your, your, your grandfather, your mother, your father, whatever. They were part of the trade union or they had the church or they had whatever. They had that institution to fall back on. But we only have each other and everyone's more interested in politics in a superficial way, in a narcissistic way. Mm -hmm. It's about Facebook and Instagram mm -hmm. and taking a picture of that funny sign. Mm -hmm. And we go there for five minutes and we feel great and that takes away our fear. But then we go back to our bedrooms and back to our laptops and we're like, okay, well, what, what are we really doing? And what do we really have? I, like, I mean, like Berlin and London are completely two different cities. Mm -hmm. You do have more leftist networks there. It's a smaller city and there's more connections to that, but I do know what you're talking about with the whole neoliberalism. It's it's you know, it's becoming infected by that and you know, it's disappearing. But here in London that's been happening way, way, way before mm. that. So I think that uh, it's much more I don't know, I, I feel that fear is more acute here. Does that make sense? Mm. But it comes together with this idea of being the best. I mean what does it even mean? Like when I moved to, it's always Berlin because it's like our example. <laughs> but um, when I moved there, it's like there was not so much the idea of who's the best. It's like we're doing something that's like a party, or somebody says, "I'll go to there or do this." But like the options were more not about like how can I succeed, and everybody else is my competitor. I only experienced that here. Way but also more in than the art scene, yeah. that's what interests me because what I found very weird all the time is like for me. The art school in Frankfurt, Städelschule, I guess you all know it was for me was like a, it seemed like a paradise. But everybody who studied there hated it because it was so competitive, and everybody was like just going to the from one show to the next, the money, blah blah blah. So I was like, what, what the fuck? Why are you not using this great opportunity to make something good out of it? So I wonder if the art scene in Berlin is was all, also like this, like I mean, giving yeah. having a good time, whatever job you have, it doesn't matter. It's like many people want a little thing. So the competition is there, naturally. I think that's an artist-specific condition because it's like irrational. In a way, what everybody wants is kind of irrational. But it was like something particular within the context of Berlin, which was like kind of like a tranquilizer to be in a city that is like takes us away and say like, okay, now I had my rage and I was angry with my friend and I go to Rubelov and have a beer and it's like 12 in the night. And then you come home at five and you're drunk and you think, ah, oh, it wasn't that bad until the next day where you have the same angst and same competition and the same struggle. So it's like a weird mix. That's like, mm. I call it like the cotton ball or bubble of Berlin, which is also dangerous because you always find a way out of it. That's the island. Here you'd never get that because it's always like, <laughs> nobody has time for that. And it's like too big and too competitive because it's way more neoliberalistic than Berlin will ever be. That was my experience. Mm. It's also the reason why I moved out of Berlin because I find it kind of funny to live in this like <laughs> environment that is always taking the edge off because the edge is not gone, it's just you're taking Xanax. What? what you're taking like Xanax or um, mm. any other like uh, <coughs> drug. It's like makes everything mild and easy and like forget it. Mm. I mean, it's like also interesting because I'm like, um, Catherine, uh, you can talk about your uh, thing. But you can. <laughs> but sometimes in your like CV, maybe you should not put your, but you are like doctor, you know. Ah. Yeah. 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 And you know, like, uh, like I know it's the same thing. Like, but sometimes maybe you should not put in your CV being like artist. So it's also kind of like, kind of crazy thing. To, like you know, you are artist or you are doctor, and then you, you like should not put on your thing like. You know what? This kind of like I don't understand this kind of um, thoughts in society, mm -hmm. but you should like hide your knowledges, or because you're too clever for some positions, or it's kind of just like kind of you know these things just well, then I don't come in the brain together like sometimes. It is too clever, but it, it it it's perhaps about relevance more. You know, I know okay, you know the, there's uh, other things can come into the mix, hmm. but if you're um, if you're talking about a CV, you're, you're talking about a, uh, an application toward or uh, making an application. But if, 
uh, you know, needs must if, if you're looking for something in another field and uh, your qualifications will just sort of, uh, that are, are irrelevant okay. to this uh, situation will only confuse it. Mm. I understand what you say that. But, you know, it's just like, I know, like, just like, that doesn't kind of, my, 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 but like, press can, society but like starts to work so what? It's like running out of bed. Like, we want this kind of people and we want, we kind of like, kind of this like, you know, maybe like a feeling of used by these people in some ways and then in some ways you can put it on. So, like, it just like, I, I don't know, it just sometimes doesn't come together in my brain and I don't understand anymore what's the point of all. I think that's a culture clash. Because, <laughs> I, I, like, I've lived in other countries and this is the first time that I'm experiencing something that you're mentioning. Yeah, yeah. maybe it's like West Europe, I think. Or like not maybe, West Europe. Yeah. Because like, I never experienced like it in the countries. US. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's a cultural thing here. Yeah. Very specific. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Should be. What? Call it the night. <laughs> Call it the night? Yeah. How do we do that? Just <laughs> 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 It's the night! Cultural clash. Cultural clash. Linguistic linguistic confusion. No, I I just I tried to I don't so no, 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 just like soon soon we can have a, like talks and discussions in the, all offices around because they're going to be empty maybe. Yeah. So we have some space oh, to yeah. discuss about All different the things. To Frankfurt, we can hijack the whole thing <laughs> around there. They're waiting for you. Okay, but I, so my personal solution to the fear thing is really to be able to identify my fears and have like strategies for the moment how not to, how not to get paralyzed, stuck in my bed because it happened before and um, uh, not being able to move. We really have like strategies. Okay, get out, put some clothes on, get out of the house. It helps. I know it. And to organize myself again better than I'm now, and maybe not like before, but really organize and then go into groups where I at least find people who have, who still believe in the same ideas that I do, so I don't feel like a complete freak all the time. And um, and also try to really learn more to give a shit about things that I know my fears come from because I want to have cool clothing and I want to have uh, a knowledge about the latest pop culture and stuff. And what if this is really necessary? What do I really need? Or what is really like, maybe I have to give up for this because I have to have to pay a high price and maybe it's my fucking privileges that tell me to, to, to do that. And this is something I learn from him every day to give a shit about things because it's, I'm not so good at this, I must say, because I'm also very narcissistic and uh, I have to mm -hmm. admit that. And um, this is also what uh, is a very big source of fear, I think, the narcissism. So these are my three, three approaches to fear and my solution. And it's, I think it should always be a mixture of that for everybody personally in a different way, maybe. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Well Thanks for coming. <laughs> Thanks for coming. First round. First round. Yeah.